Hey guys, it's Kat and I'm back today for a foundation wear test. Now, I realized I have about four foundations that I've been putting aside to do wear tests on. One is a new Revlon one, one is a new Benefit one, one is a new CoverGirl one. But the one that I posted on Instagram the other day was this new L'Oreal Infallible 24 hour fresh wear foundation. So uh, this was the first on the chopping block. So that's what I'm gonna be reviewing today, along with the primer that was released in the range, which is the Magic Essence Drops. It's a blue primer and a blue powder, which is the Magic Loose Powder. It is actually blue. Um, I thought I'll try those first and make my way through the other foundations uh, later. All right, so if you're new here or you have simply forgotten, which is totally fine as well, um, my skin type is oily combination. So I get quite an oily T-zone uh, around here is normal. I do have a lot of red patchiness to my skin, which I'm trying to work on with new skincare. It's a process. We'll see how that goes in the future. Um, but I need something that can cover a lot of redness, nothing that's like hard to cover. So not like scars or breakouts or anything that like is raised and difficult, but I just have a lot of patchiness. So I need foundation that covers that, that lasts really well throughout the day. doesn't break down in my T zone. And that's pretty much what I look for. So, so I was sent this by Laurie in Australia but um, the reason why I wanted to try this first was because I like the idea of a 24 hour sort of fresh lightweight foundation because often with higher coverage foundations and long wear foundations they're often very very cakey and if they are cakey they tend to break me out so so the claims of this foundation sort of sit with what I want from a daily foundation not necessarily a filming foundation where you just need to be a little bit more flawless but an everyday foundation so I'll talk about the claims okay so they're saying that this is a 24 hour non-stop long wear foundation great uh, it provides superior hold and moisturizing comfort for 24 hour flawless coverage. No touch ups required. Let's see about that. Um, fighting imperfections and shine without compromising on moisture, skin is left truly infallible. So it's got the added benefit of hyaluronic fresh complex that increases the level of water held by the skin. So it's not supposed to be caking or drying on the skin, which is fantastic. So the main thing that I've noticed about the claims is that they're really, really pushing the comfort, the long wear, and the fact that it doesn't make you feel dry and it keeps your skin hydrated. Now, what you can't see on the one that I've opened because I'm wearing this one today, but I've also worn it yesterday. I sort of like to try, uh, do a wear test after I've already used the foundation. So if something unusual happens in the wear test, I can compare it to when I used it last. And I used this yesterday, um, but you have to peel off a sticker that says new oxygen technology. So I don't know what that actually means, but they're putting some technology in this to like oxygenate, to hydrate, I don't know, to something eight uh, your skin. So one thing that I've noticed on the description of this is they don't tell you the coverage. Um, they just sort of tell you that it's flawless coverage um, and they don't tell you the finish. So they don't say if it's dewy, they don't say if it's matte. Um, they don't mention that at all. So that is something that I think is interesting about this. Now that has launched in Australia and in Australia it's 10 shades available, which is not much at all. I feel like they're testing the market to see if this is a foundation that catches on and they might introduce new shades. I'm not too sure. Um, but what they have launched along with that is this primer, which is a blue tinted primer. It's kind of strange. So the information about this one, it says it's blue toned brightening technology for all day radiance, 24 hour deep hydration with no sticky residue, lightweight water texture for a fresh feeling and quick absorption. It's a perfect base for smoother makeup application. And it's uh, specially formulated with blue toned light diffusing technology to counteract sallowness and revitalize and restore radiance to dull looking skin. So it's suitable for all skin types. And it's also enriched with acai, kiwi and goji as well as hyaluronic acid so it's supposed to not be greasy or sticky um, and it's supposed to yeah, absorb really well one thing i found that's interesting about this is i did skip over to the ingredients and uh, it's got water and then the third ingredient is denatured alcohol now i could kind of tell that because when you smell this um, i tried it yesterday for the first time i sort of have a blocked nose now but it smells like alcohol and raw ingredients. So it doesn't smell like a nice hydrating serum. It kind of 
puts you off a little bit. It sort of smells like a setting spray. I think that's exactly what it smells like, a setting spray. So this is not like, I don't know, it's supposed to help hydrate. I will try it today, um, but I don't think it, it will replace any serums. I don't know the difference that it's made to my skin um, as a primer. It's not the type of primer I normally would go for. So I find this to be a bit of a strange situation, but um, you can see how this applies later on. Then lastly from the range, what I'll try as well is this powder. So it is a blue powder. Uh, it's a little bit unusual. Um, it is like a really, really light periwinkle sort of blue. So with this powder, there's not too much information. They do say it's a transparent setting powder for all day matte finish that lasts. And they say it also smooths the look of the skin. Now there's not too much information about this, but I am wearing it today and it does make my skin quite matte. It feels very set and very matte. Um, I did wear this yesterday. It actually made my makeup matte like all day. So we'll see if that does that today. The slightly annoying thing about reviewing the whole three together is I don't know how things wear by themselves. This is a review of all three, which sort of means that I don't know how the foundation will work on its own without the powder, without the primer, I'm doing the triple whammy. So it's a little bit limited in that regard, but I sort of wanted to try them all together. So right now these are all available in Australia. So you can buy them wherever you get L'Oreal at Priceline right now, they're 30% off. And this I believe is exclusive to Priceline. It's probably the thing that I would recommend the least so far, just on first impressions, because I just don't like primers with a lot of alcohol. I don't see the need of it. Like it generally can cause more issues than what it's helping the skin with. Uh, it's not a primer that I personally feel I need in my life. All right, let's cut to me applying the foundation. All right, it's 9.04, so we'll start the wear test. All right, so you can see some of my issues are definitely redness and like patchiness. Um, so I like to, I have a foundation that at least covers that. I also am quite oily. I have put on an oil this morning as well. So I'm trying to add more like oils to my skincare routine. So I'm looking a little bit oilier than I normally would at this stage. Um, and I'm also a little bit redder because I just exercised, but um, we'll cover some of this hopefully with this foundation. But I'm gonna start with the blue primer and just apply this with my fingers. This does have a blue dropper like this. It's a very, very runny liquid. So you can see that it is blue. In a high concentration, it's blue, but when you do rub it in, it does go clear. So I don't know. Here comes the cats after breakfast. Go them. I'm going to put a little bit more on. So there we go again. It doesn't actually look blue on the face, which is great because it would be strange. Um, it just feels like a serum. So usually I don't use primers with my foundation wear test, but because I've got the three steps, I thought I'd use them together. You can see that there is some like um, iridescence to the liquid. So it's not shimmery or glittery, but it does catch the light with a little bit of iridescence. But I don't know if that translates to the face. It's kind of strange. So now I'm going to go in with the foundation. I'm going to go in the shade uh, Vanilla 120. Um, I did use a brush with it yesterday. So I used a little hourglass sort of buffing brush. If this doesn't work well with a sponge, I'll just transition over to the brush because I know it does work fairly well with that. So the pump is a little bit unusual. It looks a little bit boxy and a little bit, I don't know, it's just different, which is okay. The lid is see-through, which is, I don't know, interesting design choice. I'm going to pump two pumps on the back of my hand. Uh, generally sponges use up more product than brushes. So I think I used two pumps and it was fine yesterday, but I might need to use three with the sponge, but there you go. So start applying it actually isn't too bad. This is quite yellow toned, which I like because not only do, does yellow tones cancel out some of my redness that I'm currently trying to target with new skincare. I'm trying to combat that, um, the redness, but it also matches my body, which is a little bit more yellow toned. So this is looking quite decent coverage and it's very, very thin. It does smell quite perfumed. Nothing too crazy, but um, if you don't like anything fragranced, you won't like this. This reminds me of like old school foundations um, that I used to use when I started getting into foundation and makeup. So it kind of is a bit reminiscent to me. I've just got in with another pump um, because the sponge has, has soaked it up. I reckon a slightly more neutral color would have worked a bit better for me. Um, I do have artificial lights right now because it's not bright enough to film without them, but um, it's looking a little bit yellow on me right now. All right, so with one layer, which I did use with a sponge, use three pumps to really spread it over. 
That applied really easily, really evenly. I uh, didn't cover everything. You can see I've still got a few like patchiness action happening here, which I can go and build up if I wanted to. It doesn't really bother me too much. If I was um, having a day of filming, I'd probably want to touch that up. But on a normal day, I don't mind if there's any imperfections that are poking through, but I might see if I can build that up. I'm just going to use a tiny, tiny, tiny dribble more just to see if I can touch up that spot a little bit. But um, yeah, I'd say this is a good like medium, not quite full, but medium to full coverage. So you can get it full if you build it. Um, but then again, you can sort of really shear it out to more of a um, lighter medium coverage if you just wanted to like put a little bit on a brush and really blend it out, which is pretty much what I did with it yesterday. But this is building it up a little bit more. It's covered it a little bit more, but not entirely. So it doesn't get to full coverage but it definitely covers most sins. It does feel quite lightweight. It still feels a little bit wet and it feels like I'm wearing foundation because I've just applied foundation to my face. But it, like when you touch it, it feels like sort of skin. It feels like there's nothing really there. So um, that's interesting. Now I'm gonna apply some concealer. I don't usually show this in my wear tests because it's not really applicable to the wear test, but um, I do want to use this powder to set everything and I want to do that after I use concealer. So I'm also testing out, this is the second time I've used this as well, the Flower Beauty Concealer. This is a Light Illusion Full Coverage Concealer in the shade Light. So I just picked this up uh, the other day, half price from Chemist Warehouse and I thought I'll give it a crack. So I'm just gonna, that's a bit too light for me. I did try this yesterday as well and it, you know, it's a nice concealer, but it is a little bit too light. I'm just putting a little bit in the nose creases because that's what I normally do. Let's blend some of this out. So this powder is really interesting because you can see the packaging is like a light baby blue color. Um, and when you actually look at the powder, it is a light baby blue color, which is very peculiar. And when you put this on, it's very strange. So I'm just getting a brush. This is a fancy brush. This is the Isom X52 brush. And I'm just taking a little bit. And unlike the primer, you do see that this goes on blue to begin with. I don't know if you can see that, but especially in contrast to the yellow, um, it looks a bit jarring. I would not recommend this to people that have to mix their foundations with a lot of white. Um, or have the lightest of the lightest shade in foundation because this will tint you blue. Um, there is enough blue in there, I think, that would do that. But otherwise, it just seems like a weird novelty. And hey, I'm all for some fun makeup and some novelty if it's not causing any drama. So if it's not making your makeup look bad or it's not adding in ingredients that um, are bad for you. But uh, yeah, I, I'm not quite sure what the point of the blue powder is, but I think it does actually neutralize some of the yellow foundation for me. So I'm not really hating it too much. It feels really set, which is nice, but like I've got oily skin, so set feels good to me. Um, it doesn't feel too dry on me. I don't really have any dry patches. Um, I did also apply moisturizer and oil and stuff under this. One thing I do want to say is close up. I don't think it works well with this concealer. The concealer doesn't seem to like it. It looks like it's starting to like bunch up a little bit. So I'm not sure if you can see too much. Ignore my bags. Um, but the concealer looks like it sort of didn't set properly or it didn't blend properly. So the concealer either is not really working with the foundation or the concealer didn't like to be set by that powder. But I won't judge this foundation based on my under eyes because I think that's the concealer not liking the powder. Because the rest of my skin looks quite good and it's set really nicely and nothing looks like it's separating. So I reckon it's the concealer. All right, so my makeup has been done and I think the makeup sits really, really well over this. It almost looks like it's airbrushed and flawless on camera, which I'm really surprised about. I didn't expect this much coverage um, from the foundation because when you look at the claims, it doesn't, it says flawless coverage, but it doesn't really tell you what coverage. I still think if you shear it down, it's more of a medium coverage. If you build it up, it's more of a higher coverage. And I think it's looks really, really great. Um, I did have to go in and fix up the concealer. Um, I used my trusty Maybelline Fit Me Concealer in light. So all I did was I apply a little bit more, blended it out, and then I used the powder again. The powder did sit really nicely over the Fit Me. So I think the issue that I had before was the Flower Beauty um, concealer. Now, I'm not saying that that's a bad concealer. I just don't think it either mixes with this powder well or mixes 
with the foundation. So maybe it's separated on top of the foundation. I'm not too sure, but it didn't look great. Um, Fit Me, which is an old trusty one of mine, worked really well. So it definitely wasn't the fault of the powder is what I'm trying to get to because this set the Fit Me really, really nicely. Um, and I actually do like the blue tint. I think if you built it up more and more, it could make you look a little bit gray. Um, I don't necessarily think this blue color is quite brightening. Um, if anything, it might be a bit dulling. Um, I know it's supposed to counteract those sort of orangey tones, which is what a blue is supposed to counteract. Um, and it, uh, if you do have a lot of sort of yellowy tones in your skin that you want to uh, balance out, this might be an okay one for you. I think it worked well on top of my foundation that I found to be a little bit too yellow for me. It did neutralize it a little bit. But if you do have quite pink tones to your skin, this can make you look quite gray, I would imagine. So... Um, I did like the powder though. It mattifies really well. Um, and I think without it, this is just like your standard sort of satin finish. I don't think it's a dewy finish. Um, it definitely feels like it sort of sets on its own, but it's not super matte, if that makes sense. I did bronze my neck a little bit to match, but the bronzer that I put on and the blush just fits really nicely over this makeup. I think because it's got that soft powder finish, it just sort of glides over the top. My I think I'm having a pretty good makeup day. Um, uh, the rest of the makeup, in case you're wondering, on my lips, I'm wearing just the Dolce K uh, Kylie lip pencil. That's all it is. Later, I might put a lip gloss over the top. And then on my eyes, I'm wearing the Natasha Denona Gold Palette. Um, I've just hit up some of the brown sort of colors in there. So um, I've gone basic brown. All right, so hopefully you can see that everything's looking quite good. Under the eyes looks a lot better than it did before. Everything looks set, but it doesn't look too flat matte. There's actually a bit of like luminosity to things. I didn't put any highlighter because I really want to see how when the oils start to break through. Um, so it feels like a powder finish, but nothing too drying, which is really nice. I can tell that there are some patches that are sort of lifting off on my nose a little bit. And one thing I did notice when I wore this yesterday was when I wore sunglasses, it was major sunglasses marks. So just from yesterday's experience, I feel like this is a sort of foundation that doesn't necessarily lift when you touch it, but when it's got something sitting on it, it can sort of wear away the foundation. So we'll see how that goes today. I will be going out, we'll be wearing sunglasses, but I really like the finish. It almost looks blurred, which is what it's claiming to do. And I think that's totally correct. I just feel like I'm having a really good skin day. You can see a little bit of redness poking through, but it doesn't bother me because it looks like skin and that sort of is fine. All right, so I think on first impressions, I'm really digging this. Um, today is a pretty cold day, but I am going out and about and it is sunny. So um, I'm not gonna just be sitting in my tomb of an apartment like cryogenically frozen and everything's just gonna be locked into place. I will be going from heating to cold to sun to walking around. So I will put it through the paces, but I will check back probably about the three hour mark, which is in a couple of hours now, and um, probably like eight hour mark, and then I'll finish it at 12 hour mark. Um, but my biggest hassle probably with this was definitely the color match. Um, it's not a huge deal because I was sent three shades. Uh, I didn't actually pick my own, but there are only 10 shades available in Australia. These are the 10 shades. There's like beige, 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 slightly more tanned, slightly deeper and a deeper shade. And the deeper shade I do have, so they sent that in PR, this is a deeper shade, which is actually a nice shade. So for L'Oreal and for the Australian market, this is actually a pretty deep shade. So a lot of people will like that, but they'll need to be fleshed out the undertones and the mid tones, because this is a bit ridiculous. Um, but I've also got 290, which is, which is this one here. So that one is that one. The one that I'm using today that's a little bit yellow is uh, 120 vanilla, which is a second lighter shade. And then there's ivory before that. So I am this tone, but I want something a little bit more neutral. So I'd probably actually go up to uh, true beige. Beige for me in drugstore generally works well because it's more of a neutral shade. So I think the color match for me was a little bit off. And I think if I was to purchase it, um, the more true beige is better than vanilla for me. But um, yeah, the color range is pretty poor. So if you really like this formula, you have to sort of work with it like I did to either bronze areas or bronze your neck to sort of uh, make it look like it works better or you can use color adjusting drops or whatever it might be to tweak them because there's very, very limited shades at the moment. 
But I'm really digging the look of this. I think this looks really great on camera and in person. So I'm really keen to see how it wears. All right, so I've had this foundation on for 12 hours. No, it's 12.06. I've had it on for three hours. <laughs> Simon's here, we're gonna go out. But um, I'm just gonna zoom in and show you. It's looking pretty good. Simon, is my makeup looking good? I Wait. like it. it looks oh, thanks, good. Simon. It's very, like, bronzy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the only things I'm noticing is that it's sort of settling in a little bit to some pores and fine lines, but it's, you've got to look really close to notice that. And I think it's starting to separate a little bit around here, but I think that might be the concealer debacle that I had before. So, wearing off a little bit on my chin, it's my oiliest area, but otherwise I think it's looking pretty good at the three hour mark. So I'm going out with Simon, <laughs> and, <laughs> and then I'll be back later. And, um, wait, Simon, Where's duck it? in. Go near the fridge. Go okay. near the fridge. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'll check back in in a few hours' time. So, it's five o'clock on the cat clock, um, and that means I've been wearing this for about eight hours, give or take a few minutes. It is getting a little bit dewy. You can see on my forehead, you can just track that shine. Um, but otherwise, it looks pretty damn good so i'll turn this brightness down a bit so you can just see a little bit more shine um but it kind of looks glowy it's at the point now where i sort of if i wasn't out and about i probably should have checked in an hour ago and touched up then i feel like eight hours is sort of pushing this for oily skin um but i have been out and about most of the day i have been you know under heater out in the sun walking around you know, doing stuff. So um, this is probably, yeah, I would have liked to have touched up a little bit earlier. All right, so you can see that there's dew going on, but it hasn't broken down the foundation. It's also not transferring. My finger is just picking up the oils, if you know what I mean. So it's actually sort of blotting it, but the foundation isn't disrupting. I did notice that the first place they started breaking down was around my nose. There's like a little gathering, a little pool of oil, and that sort of started happening maybe at like the four or five hour mark. We've got a little bit of oil on the chin as well, but it hasn't yet completely broken down. So even though this is quite dewy, it's been holding the oil pretty well up until maybe about an hour ago. So uh, it's not beyond repair. So what I'm gonna do now is continue this for another four hours because I wanna get it to the 12 hour mark, but I will blot um, just a little bit with powder because um, otherwise I know this is gonna turn oilier and grosser, but I wanna see if you can save this. Now I'm not gonna blot with um, this powder because it's not the type of powder that I would normally blot with. I'm also a little bit concerned that with the blue, if it's sort of gathering around the oils around my nose, it might start looking blue um, because yeah, especially when you've got oily kind of areas going on, um, the powder can really cling to it. So I'm just gonna use my normal blotting um, powder that I have in my handbag, which is from Soap and Glory, one heck of a blot. So that's it there. Um, and I'm just actually gonna use um, this brush only because I've got it here right now. So I'm gonna just blot in the, especially around here. That's the only area that is being disrupted. Every other area is staying um, intact. Um, the only part that's sort of moving around is around the nose. There's a little bit of sunglasses marks, but not as bad as yesterday. Yesterday I did actually wear my sunglasses for a lot longer, but, um, you know, it is what it is. You can see that this is starting to blot pretty well. It's going back to its sort of normal sort of set matte state. It's even blotted the chin pretty well. So after a simple just powder, this is actually looking a lot more refreshed. Uh, it's feeling a lot more comfortable. I'm not feeling like if I touch my face, I could potentially start smearing my makeup. Um, this, yeah, I would be happy to go out again and just um, be like this because yeah, around the nose, you can't see too much. Like I said, it was where I was starting to break down first, but um, touched up, it's not a big deal. So often when foundations do start to break down a lot on me, they break down like large areas and you can not you can start seeing the makeup separate. This has stayed pretty well intact. So definitely my first impressions of this foundation so far is that it looks really good on the skin. It feels really nice on the skin, but if you have oily skin at the six, seven, eight hour mark, you're going to have to touch up. Otherwise it's gonna break down, which is not the worst thing. Uh, when I used to work full time, I used to often blot my face, 
you know, halfway through the day. So this is not an unusual situation. Um, but I do think that if you were in a hotter climate or a, if you're in summer, we're in winter right now, um, this would be one that would sort of wear down a lot faster. But um, otherwise, it's pretty good. And this time yesterday when I was wearing it, it still felt pretty matte. I was surprised that my face felt pretty matte all day. But at the same time, I was doing a lot more today. So um, I feel like maybe I put it through the paces a little bit more. All right, so it's been 12 and a half hours since I put this on. And you can see that after my last touch up, it is getting back to being the dewy stage where it looks like it's gonna start breaking down soon. Um, I can sort of see that on the chin, it's very oily um, and there's already sort of breaking down around the nose. So this is not a 24 hour wear foundation on my skin. I did post a photo of me wearing this foundation on Instagram earlier today because I liked the look of it. I thought it looked really nice on camera. Um, and I did have a few people say that they were, this is like their new favorite foundation. Um, and a few people saying that they've got dry skin. It works really well on them. Other people saying um, they've got oily skin and it looks great on them, but they haven't really tested it for more than 12 hours um, or a long period of time. And I'm gonna say, I don't think it lasts a long period of time. Uh, it claims 24 hour wear on my oily combination skin. Doesn't do that. Once again, I could probably blot and touch up these areas, but I almost feel like the second time around, um, it gets too chunky and too oily. So you'd have to actually blot off the oil, maybe touch it up with concealer and then refresh it. So if you kept doing it in a way that sort of kept repairing the areas that were breaking down, you could make this last a little bit longer, but I think it's more designed for normal skin. I don't think, I think it looks nice on oily skin. I'm sure it'll look really nice and wear well on dry skin, but I think this is probably the sweet spot would be normal skin. So I can't really say what I think about this particular foundation without the powder and without the primer because I did use them all together. What I'll probably do is um, when I do my sort of favorites and fails of the month, I might recap um, what I think about this without the particular powder, without the particular primer. But for something that is long wear with breathable technology um, and they really, really emphasize long wear, I don't think this wears long enough, but I think it does look gorgeous on the skin. One thing that it didn't do today as much as it did yesterday on me was lift on the um, where I am wearing uh, sunglasses. I was doing a lot of driving yesterday and the sunglasses marks were quite noticeable. So I do think this is one that can lift if you've got things touching your face but I think it looks gorgeous. I think it's a really, really beautiful foundation. It feels nice and light, which is what it claims to do. And even though I do look quite dewy and gross, I don't actually feel super gross. Like when I touch my skin, I'm like, oh yeah, my skin feels like skin. It's not really transferring or smearing off. It's just sort of got oily areas. So I do actually really like this foundation. I like the look of it. I like the feel of it. I like the coverage, which is sort of medium buildable. I think it's really, really nice for normal everyday wear. If you had a long day ahead of you and you're doing your makeup at like 7 a.m., you're gonna wash it at like off at 10 p.m. This won't last if you've got oily skin, but if you are wearing it to like catch up with friends on the weekend or do whatever, anything like that, I think it's a really, really beautiful foundation and I will continue to use it happily. And when I use this up, I'll probably go for the more neutral shade. I think it's like the shade up um, because this is a little bit yellow for me, but I can definitely make it work. Like the foundation, I will test these guys sort of independently um, to see how they work with other products because I'm curious to see if the combination of all three gave me the flawless finish or if it wasn't just the foundation. Um, I did quite like the loose powder. I think it does mattify well. The color is a bit unusual. They say that it's supposed to cancel out the sort of uh, dull tones of the skin, but I don't think it's gonna work on everyone and I don't think it's really necessary to have the blue tint but with the foundation that I was using, um, it did pair pretty well. So I don't mind this as a translucent powder, but once again, I don't think the gimmick is necessary. The thing I probably like the least is the little serum primer. Um, and it's mainly because I didn't see any benefit. When I do look at it, I can see some shimmer in it. I didn't see that luminosity translated to the skin. It sort of felt like, um, yeah, a thin serum product that smelt a lot like alcohol. And because one of the main ingredients is alcohol, I it doesn't make me want to use this. So for me, I prefer primers that either 
add to the longevity of my makeup or make my makeup look really nice. And I'm not sure if this step did much. Like I said, I'm going to have to start using it independently and try it a couple of times with other products to see maybe even one day use it half face to see if it actually makes a difference. But I really doubt that it's going to do that. But overall, I really did like the effect of them all together. So I'm going to start pulling them apart and checking them out to see um, how they work independently. But um, yeah, even though this isn't looking the best right now, it certainly isn't looking the worst. And um, I think overall, when you sort of put on makeup and you feel like you look really good and it sort of feels comfortable, you kind of look a little bit airbrushed um, and it's quite easy to apply. It's not patchy or streaky. It was really easy with a brush and a sponge. Um, it's definitely a foundation I'm going to try a lot more in the future. All right, so I'm going to wrap it up there. But before I do, I, I want to show you the foundations that I haven't used yet that I want to do wear tests on. So I've got um, the CoverGirl Outlast Active. I've got the Revlon Candid, um, what is it? Natural Finish Anti-Pollution Foundation. I picked this up half price on chem from Chemist Warehouse the other day and I was sent um, the Benefit Hello Happy Flawless Brightening Foundation, which has just come out in Australia. So these are the ones that I have um, on the cards for the next sort of uh, foundation wear test. So I'd love to know what you want to see the most and I'll make that one a priority. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.